Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be reviewing this. That's right, the Nikon F5. Well, the dark ages of digital cameras are well upon us now, but what if I told you there used to be a beautiful time, well before the age of cybernetic photon wranglers? A time when Nikon dared to make the perfect 35mm camera and came damn close with the Nikon F5. I've had this camera for about two years now, so I thought I'd do a review on it. Known as the workhorse of Nikon cameras, and simply as the beast by me, the Nikon F5 is probably the last 35mm camera you'll ever need to buy. You're watching a modern day miracle. Because this film was shot on a camera that only takes stills. The Nikon F5, technically the quickest camera in the world. This camera debuted in 1996 and retailed for about $2,300 and its tagline was imported from the future, which I guess if that were true, this would be a digital camera. Didn't see that one coming, I guess. I picked up this F5 for about $225 about two years ago and it doesn't really seem like the prices have fluctuated too much since then. The Nikon F5 was geared more for a sports and wildlife photography market because it boasts an impressive eight frames a second shooting speed on its high speed setting. This is a feature that I've never really needed, but I won't lie to you, it's pretty cool. Shooting eight frames a second on this camera can eat up a 36 exposure roll of 35 millimeter film in four and a half seconds, which is four seconds longer than it took for the girl that I asked to prom to say no. Cindy, we could have been happy. Did you say something, honey? No, dear. A fun little anecdote about the Nikon F5 is that Arthur Morris, who at the time was under contract with Canon, said that the Nikon F5 is the best camera in the world and then promptly disappeared shortly thereafter. Don't fuck around with Canon. To turn your camera on, you can't just turn the on switch over here. It's locked. So what you need to do is push and hold down on this button next to it and then use your middle finger to turn it on like so you'll see that the lights come on at the top of your screen. Same thing for turning your camera off. You can't just turn it off. You need to hold the button down and flip it to the off position. To load your film, you have to press down on this button right here and push this to the side. So we'll do that now. And then lift. Cool. And as you can see, this is the back of the camera. Yeah, exciting stuff. So film goes in here, close it up. This camera has DX code reading, so what that means is the camera will read the ISO of the film you put in and automatically change the ISO on your camera to match. But if you're like me and you enjoy f***ing around with different ISO settings, what you can do is actually flip this bottom component here and you'll see that there is an ISO button here. I'm gonna try and do this backwards. If you hold that down and then change the scroll wheel, your ISO should change. I believe this only really affects the uh, light meter and any auto settings you may choose to use. Shutter speeds on this dense piece of mass range from 30 seconds all the way down to 1 8,000th of a second, which is pretty great if you wanna shoot wide open on a sunny day. There is also a bulb mode built in. Now, supposedly the Nikon F5 can do up to a 30 minute exposure, but you kinda of have to like dig through these bullshit menus to find it. And by bullshit menus, I mean that you can't decode these menus without referencing a chart. And frankly, that just sounds like a lot of work. Hell, I'm exhausted just talking about it. 
Honestly, I'm not really sure why this feature isn't available from the get-go. The only time I can imagine it being a hindrance is maybe if you were shooting a wedding and let's say you caught the groom making out with a bridesmaid and that's just the type of photo you want to take and include in your wedding package. But oh no, you accidentally bumped your camera to the 30 minute exposure setting. Not only would you have to wait 30 minutes for the shutter to close and to shoot again, but that image of what would surely lead to a beautiful disaster of a wedding is gone forever. But then again, why the hell is your shutter speed anywhere near the 30 minute mark on your camera if you're shooting a wedding? It doesn't make sense to me. It should be available by default, and if you disagree with me, you can come fight me about it. I'll leave my address on screen. Mirror lockup is also a thing on this camera, so if I pop the lens off here, you'll see that the mirror is down. However, if we turn this switch, the mirror will pop up and stay up. This camera takes uh, F and G mount Nikon lenses, which means that there's a huge catalog of Nikon lenses you can use with this camera because Nikon was using the F line of mounts as far back as 1959. The biggest difference between F and G lenses is that F lenses have the aperture dial built in on the lens. So in this case, my Sigma lens here is a G lens because the F-stop is built in electronically. Autofocus is also a thing on this camera. Um, you also have to switch it on your lens as well but I can't particularly speak on that because I do all the focusing manually on this camera. The viewfinder is pretty great. Here's a recreation of what it looks like. The light meter is there at the bottom and will accurately tell you if it's the correct exposure based on your settings when you center the dots. Like Luke Skywalker locking on target and firing missiles straight up the Death Star's butthole. The camera comes with three types of metering, spot, center weighted, and 3D color matrix metering. And if you're like, what the f is 3D color matrix metering and why am I aroused, then you're not alone. I'm sure someone else can explain it better, but I'll give it a shot. Essentially what it seems like is that it's a RGB grid with 1005 cells that analyze the light coming in and use the zone system to determine exposure and then make adjustments based on the color of your scene. This is a feature that only ever appeared on the Nikon F5 and I think it's worth mentioning that it will not work with manual lenses. However, it seems to be one of the most accurate color metering systems in the game, so that's pretty cool. If you're worried that your Nikon F5 isn't heavy enough, you can throw on a METS flash like I did here. The fastest the F5 can shoot with flash is at 1 250th of a second, which is quite impressive. I can't imagine needing to go faster than that with a flash. When you're done shooting and it's time to rewind your film, you need to flip your camera over and there are two buttons you're gonna have to press. So if we go ahead and flip this open, we can hit the button on the inside. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a button. Go ahead and hit that. Cool. And then up here, press the button and lift the lever and it will start rewinding. Something else worth mentioning too is that this camera also supports bracketing down here in the, I guess, sub menu. There's a little bracket button. Cool. The camera body itself isn't water sealed, but it is rain and dust resistant, but it's not girl resistant. So you'll have to fend off all the ladies trying to swarm you in camera admiration. Probably the coolest part of this camera is the self-diagnosing shutter that's built in. From my understanding, the camera will actually measure every time you actuate the shutter and make small corrections to make it more accurate as time goes on, which is a way better way to self-diagnose than the way I do it, which is when my ear hurts and I log on to WebMD and find out I'm dying of ass cancer and have 30 seconds to live. Well, it was time to put the camera to the test, so I grabbed Caleb, my F5, and all my hopes and dreams, and hit the open road up to Ventura, California, where we met up with fellow film photographer Andrew Ball. I would say this is a nicer camera. 
than the F4. Yeah. With my F5, I typically shoot with a Sigma art lens that has an aperture that goes as low as 1.4, which was also conveniently my GPA in high school. Cons. Um, it's really hard to talk about cons on this camera because it has pretty much everything you'll need from a 35mm camera. Except it doesn't have talent, so you're just gonna have to copy that from someone else. A true con of this camera is that it's heavy and big. Like a brick, it's perfect for throwing through the passenger side window of your ex-girlfriend's car. Yeah, there's no denying it, it's not the lightest camera to carry around, especially when you use the Sigma art lens like I've got here. I think what makes this camera heavy are the eight AA batteries that go into the bottom of this thing, but in all fairness, these batteries do last a long time in this camera. So yeah, okay, let's slide that back in. Cool. Another con of this camera is that there's no shutter cable release port. I get that this camera is trying to be futuristic, but that's something that would have been nice to have. You can get a special Nikon remote trigger for the shutter, but like why? Shutter cable releases are universal. There's also a really easy to use self timer option, which is kind of a bypass for the whole no cable release port thing. It's pretty easy to set up the self timer and by default, I think it's at 10 seconds. If you wanna change that time, you're gonna to have to dig around in the aforementioned bullshit menus. So in the end, even though this is literally the best camera I've ever used and probably will ever use, I think my time with it is up and we're going to part ways. So if you run into me on the streets in the next few weeks, and I'm drunk and lonely, this is probably why. In fact, after I'm done recording this video, I'm gonna go watch a sad movie, eat a whole gallon of ice cream, and then cry into the mirror for an hour. Why am I dumping this camera, you may be wondering. Well, the truth is the shutter speed dial on this camera is a bit out of whack. Sometimes, if you wind it one way, the shutter speed goes the other way. However, sometimes it will work properly, and then other times it just straight won't work at all. It can be all over the place sometimes, and if I'm rushing for a shot, it will most certainly fail me, like all my third grade teachers did. I'm sure that this is just a specific issue with this one single camera, but if you're looking into buying this, then that might be something you inquire about. As I mentioned earlier too, the autofocus on this camera doesn't really seem to work. I'm not sure if it's because I'm using a newer lens on an older camera body, but whatever it is, it would be nice to have autofocus. So yeah, I think it's time to send this camera off into the wild and try a different beast from this era of cameras. Because you know, variety is the spice of life. Except like regular spices, I guess. That was a dumb ending. And I don't have anything else to say, so bye.